welcome back everyone today we will solve another problem it's about minimum average two slice we will read problem statement after starting let's start now at first we have to understand the problem what we have to solve and what we should find out this is the problem statement a non-empty array a consistence of n integers is given a pair of integers p and q such that it should be smaller than equal to p and smaller than equal smaller than q smaller than n n means number of integer and q is the array value p also array value integer p and q because we should find out the slice and average for an example here it's written the average of slice p q is the sum of a inside this it will be integer value inside this this is the index integer value you already understand how in the integer is counting with array divided by the length of slice if for example if we will take 0 to 1 index number 0 index number 1 then 4 plus 2 it will be 6 and we should divide it by 2 because we took two values then the output will be 3 as the same way you can take value from this place to this place then you should add all the numbers and divide it with the 1 2 3 4 5 divide by 5 this is the normally we are calculating average like this way and they are asking us we should find out the minimum average what will be the minimum average between two slices and this is the problem statement and it's and this is the array and this is the explanation how it will be work like a slice 1 to 2 1 to 2 the value is 2 and 2 2 plus 2 divided by 2 and the result is 2 same way 3 4 index number 3 4 5 1 5 plus 1 divided by 2 the result is 3 I hope everyone is little bit clear what we have to do I already solved this problem also I can write a code then maybe you will understand a little bit but I think I should take it from my IntelliJ and I should explain every step then it will be more clearer for you to understand this is my solution and at first we take one variable this is the n the variable name is n and it's defining array length this is the array and we define it as a length inside this new variable after that we took another variable data type is double double means it will take floating point it will take integer point it will not a problem but if you will define only integer you can take floating point and after that double sum because uh, it can be fraction number so we should use double because double accept fraction number but integer can't after that integer will be result it should be round number it can't be fraction that's why we took 
integer value and initially we define it 0 0 and maybe someone can be confused why we took it like this minimum average because this is our integer value and this minimum average we will get from that place that's why we will say up to maximum number where is our minimum average that's why for security reason then it will not overflow or something like this or it will not give any errors that's why we should define it max value integer dot max value this is you can say it's a built-in function so after that for iterating this array we define one for loop inside the for loop we define this variable and minus one why minus one because array always count from index number zero that's why we should make it minus one because if you have it integer value it will count until seven but you will get eight integer value from zero to seven but if you will not make it minus one then it will give you error array out of bound this error you will occur after that we initialize sum equal to this array first value this array first value is what four index number zero and i starting i is zero so primary level sum equal to we define four later we took another nested loop for loop inside this loop we start to count this below plus one because starting this below is zero index number after that plus one then it will increment one then it will go to the index number one like that time below will be two after that j is smaller than i if j is smaller than i we have to check j is smaller than i or not j j value is now two and i value is four so it's true the condition is true i plus three j value is smaller than i plus 3 so i plus 3 then 3 is this value and we are comparing with this value of course the statement is true and j below is smaller than n it's also true because n is the length of array and we are checking j below is it smaller than n or not so of course j value is 2 and there is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 of course it's it's a smaller than j after that at first it will be increment j will be increment that's why we wrote plus plus at the beginning after that j later this is the normal sum formula sum plus equal to or you can write this way and then you will understand more you can write this way but these are more simplicity way the answer will be same for understanding a step by step i did it now like this way let's see what is going on after that we should now we should find out the average and of course average can be fraction number 
that's why we define data type double and what we did sum divided by all of these rules they already told us average equal to a index number p plus a index number p plus one until a index number q it will be the sum and we should find out the average q minus p for an example okay for your understanding i should do it like this then it will be more easier Now I hope you are clear. It's specifically written. I should divide it total sum below q minus p plus one. U minus p plus one. According to the problem statement, we should match all the requirement. We should fill up all the requirement. So we find out average. The, we to following these rules later if average is smaller than minimum average minimum average we already initialize here so we are checking average is minimum or not if it's smaller because our target is find out the minimum average so minimum we are initializing average inside the minimum average Front minimum average is the final value and this one is initializing inside this value and after that result equal to p and we are returning result and it will give us the minimum average let's check is it working or not oh yes still any higher any higher any higher i think now okay now again done wow with this example it's working properly your code is semantically correct and work properly on the example test okay fine now we are going to submit and we can check what is our score wow our score is 100% correctness is 100% performance is 100% that means our solution is fulfilling all the requirements according to the problem statement that's why we received 100% score this video is little bit longer because the important thing is we should understand all the steps properly that's why i try to explain slowly then you understand clearly and you see according to the example test it's okay correctness from these consequences everything is fine everything is working properly and according to performance test and time complexity everything is working properly so thank you very much
see you in my next video take care